Okay, let's go sailing. Welcome to Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. We are two racing sailors that sold everything and refit a new to us monohull to sail around the world via Cape Horn. We've committed to an offshore route and the conditions are getting quite a bit bigger. Did we make the right decision? Good morning. As you guys can see, we've got our lee cloths up. I'm sleeping uh, out in the salon. Kate is back in the aft cabin. The waves have picked up quite a bit. Definitely enough to throw some things around the boat. So, um, kind of have to be a little bit more careful. We put uh, some roller reefs in the jib uh, and we're still moving along quite nicely. We're going in the uh, mid to high sevens most of the time, which honestly, that's right where we want to be. I'm trying to stop from the really big surfs and, and uh, you know, getting up there in the low teens because if we hit something uh, going that fast, uh, it's, it's game over. So that's about it. But as you guys can see, you know, stuff's really moving around. Uh, in the boat, the wave state is picking up, and we're going to, I think, see it pick up quite a lot more here uh, as we go into tonight. Just kind of did my rounds and climbed back in the bunk. So basically about every 20 minutes, I wake up, get out of bed, go look outside, check everything over, and then I'll also check the radar, check our position, and then uh, I go back to sleep for another 20 minutes. And that's a kind of a continual cycle uh, throughout the night. And that is how I sleep. Okay, it's finally time to jibe. It's pretty nice this morning. Well, everybody at home, we've just jibed. We're now on our final ley line, uh, which should be to near the Falkland Islands or the Malvinas, depending on uh, which side you're on. Our plan is to head just to the west side of the islands, basically on a direct route. We're hoping that the wind will stay filled in, and if we sail with enough speed, uh, it should be just like this in these conditions maybe a little bit stronger winds all the way down to the islands uh, past that uh, we're not quite sure on the weather it does look like it may get a little squirrely it may lighten up if it does lighten up we may use the engine there we've got our full gas tank so we've got about 600 miles of motoring range of course we want to conserve as much of that as we can because now we're using the diesel for heat as well I think my phone is ringing through the Bluetooth. That means wake up, Curtis. Okay, well, I will leave you to this and I am going to go make some coffee. Enjoy the sail. With the wave state picking up, we needed a bit more speed, so we changed to a third reef position and enjoyed the beautiful sunshine. And because we were sailing so deep, we added the whisker bolt to the jib to give him a bit more stability while surfing down the waves.
guys. We are in the roaring 40s. Woo! And it's really yet to roar, but we've got some waves. And how you always don't stand Good morning. Kate is taking the dog for a walk up front. Time for the dog to use the ladies room, which apparently is by the mast. That's where she likes to go. It's a good safe spot up there. Uh, the dinghy kind of makes like a little cockpit forward of the mast. Uh, so she feels pretty secure. There's also all the lines and everything. It gives her a little bit of grip and uh, kind of makes the dog feel locked into the boat up there. So that's how it's done. Uh, the wave state is pretty big now. It's grown a little bit overnight and the wind has picked up a little bit. So we're ready to go for a really good sail here. We slowed the boat down uh, in the evening about midnight. The wind was coming up and gusting into the 30s. So we decided to roll up the jib and slow the boat down uh, by a few knots uh, from about 10, uh, you know, pushing on surfs to 12s uh, to about seven and eight. Uh, just to make sure that we don't wipe out or anything like that and break anything while we're both sleeping. So we went to sleep with just the mainsail at the third reef. That seemed to work pretty well. Uh, that's our current configuration right now. Right now we turned down uh, quite a bit uh, in our wind angle to basically get the waves almost right behind the boat to really stabilize it for the dog to go for a walk. We are, oh, about halfway on our trip from Periopolis, Uruguay to Cape Horn or the Cape Horn area. We've been looking at the weather and looking at the forecast. Uh, all this wind was predicted. This is what we want. We want to ride these waves behind the boat. The, the Sweet Ruka, the J46 design, surfs really, really well. She's really smooth once you kind of lock her in and get her in a groove. Almost feels like she's on rails. She gets really stable and uh, really runs fast. So we like to sail in these kind of conditions. These like, you know, 15 to 30 knots downwind is really, really nice on the boat. Now you do have to be careful in driving. The autopilot's gotta be working properly and uh, the drivers and trimmers have to understand what they're doing to be able to do this. But once you kind of learn how to do it and figure out how to really get the boat in a nice groove and set it in a nice true wind angle and uh, get it lined up with the waves, she runs really nice. But right now our course is just about dead south. Uh, we're headed about directly at the Falkland Islands or the Malvinas. We're about 400 miles north of them. And we're probably about 300 miles off of the east coast of Argentina. So we're really out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of international waters. There's not a whole lot out here. Uh, there's no ships on the AIS. There's a big, uh, I'm gonna call it a gaggle, of uh, 
we'll call them Chinese fishing ships, processing ships and uh, transport ships, or refrigerator and freezer ships. They all kind of hang out right over there, uh, right to the, the west of us. And that's kind of the center of all the illegal fishing around here. They hang out just right on the line of, of 200 miles out from Argentina uh, in what's called outside of their exclusive economic zone in international waters. So it's a touchy subject down here. But we're just going to avoid them all and go around the outside. That's just what we do. Okay, I'm going to sign off for now. I'm going to go get suited up. I've got to go to the bow and take off of our uh, whisker pole because we're going to be heading up a little bit in angle to about 125 degrees true, which is going to put us on much more of a reachier angle. It's probably going to be a little faster and get a little wet and wild. You're probably going to see some spray start to come over the bow and everything. Maybe just the sort of footage you're looking to see on this Sunday morning as you're having your coffee with us. Bye for now.
it's been blowing 15 to 20 and now we're seeing maybe 22 25 27 at times last night it was it was uh, fairly choppy and windy but we we took it easy conserved some energy and now we're ripping along again just saucer oh. <laughs> I think I missed it but we just went 10 knots so it's pretty awesome and uh, it's it's, we're seeing some clouds, so I'm going to assume some weather is going to be on the way here pretty soon. But uh, for now, we're going to enjoy these amazing, amazing conditions. Not a whole lot out here except for us, the wind and the waves. As predicted, the wave state was picking up, but the wind conditions were holding fairly comfortable and steady. We needed to keep our speed to make sure we stayed on track to make it past the weather system coming our way. Otherwise, we could be in a world of hurt with many long hours of strong winds and no bailout option. I went outside to have a look around and do some hand steering to give the autopilot a much needed break. We were just about to shake the reefs and it started to rain a little bit. So we're not quite sure if we should continue and put up full sail or if we should just wait a second, see how these clouds and this rain settles in for us here and see what happens before we make a sail change. What do you think, Kate? What do you think? Should we wait to see what happens here? Or you want to go up one? Are you sure it's raining? Yeah. Look, there's drops on the window. I, I feel like it's fog. Which, you know, who knows what that means, you know? I think we should wait five minutes see what happens. Five, yeah, five ten. And then go from there. Oops, sorry. But I agree, I want some more sail area also. All right, we'll give it a minute. It's hard to tell from this camera angle, but you can see some fairly big waves breaking behind me. You can see some of the waves are nearly eye level for me, and while the autopilot could do a decent job, I kept driving for a few hours to maximize our polars and VMG while Curtis caught up on some sleep. As you can tell, I really enjoy myself behind the wheel. But the rain started to come down a bit stronger and I needed to make a decision to stay warm and rest or push through and continue driving. It had already been a couple of hours. I think you should do autopilot and not get wet. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Look, 
The boat needs a wash though, I'm eh? I'm melting! No! <laughs> I'm the Wicked Witch. I know. Woo! Yeah, the boat definitely needs a wash. I want you to bring in all your wetness in here though. Get soaked and bring in all your wet clothes and damp it up in here. Yeah, that's what I think. All right, take it off. Come relax. Wait, wait. Film, film this, film this, sweetie. Oh, I forgot to do the wrist straps. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are they doing? What, they... what is she doing? What is she Roxy? doing out there? I never know what she's doing. Sniffing my boots? Well, we'll try to do a little bit of hand steering. Wind did like a quick shift and lightened up real quick before this uh, rain came. Looks like fog off in the distance, but it is in fact rain. And, uh, whoo! A uh, boat really could use the fresh water rinse. Hopefully it stays good, nice sailing conditions like, for us. I think Roxy needs some agua. And Roxy needs some water. We just put our boat out in the rain and catch it. <laughs> What's going on, Roxy? You getting water? Thirsty? After a bit of rest, the wind calmed a bit and we took the opportunity to shake out the reefs and go full speed ahead.
The Roaring Forties are starting to pick up momentum. Will we see 50 knots going into the Furious 50s? A special thank you to our patrons for making these videos possible. You too can get behind the scenes content and real time updates by joining our Patreon crew at patreon.com forward slash Ruka. Don't forget to subscribe and come along for the ride. See you next time!